Hong Kong's Legislative Council is the city's lawmaking body. It also debates issues of public interests, reviews the chief executive's annual policy address, and is charged with scrutinizing the government's budget. Its 70 lawmakers serve a four-year term, with the next LegCo election scheduled for next year. Currently, the pro-establishment camp holds a majority in the council with 43 seats, that's 61% of the vote. And that means the controversial extradition bill will likely get passed should all pro-government lawmakers vote in favor of the law. LegCo President Andrew Lung had said he would allocate 66 hours for lawmakers to discuss the extradition bill and suggested a final vote on the bill would take place on Thursday the 20th of June. But he was forced to delay the debate after demonstrators blocked major highways around LegCo. It is unclear now if and when the council meeting will resume. An expert on this joins us from Hong Kong to share his thoughts. Joseph Cheng is a political analyst there. Uh, Joseph, there's been lots of blame going on on both sides, the police against the protesters and vice versa. What's your take? Well, in the first place, the police started to push towards the protesters around about 3 p.m. in the afternoon yesterday. At that time, it was already quite clear that there would be no meetings in the Legislative Council that day. So it was not a critical moment. Furthermore, the police did not allow the protesters a retreat, a peaceful and, and orderly retreat. And finally, the, it was observed that many police officers shot their tear gas pellets and uh, rubber bullets at soda level, which was unnecessarily dangerous and threatening. They were seen uh, attacking reporters and bystanders as well, hence the complaints. It probably has to do with the fact that the government identified or defined the, uh, the gatherings, the protests, as riots, hence this relatively high level of violence. Well, do you think this the violence could have been avoided if they didn't categorize it as a riot and if perhaps, you know, the protesters didn't try to push and force their way into the electrical building? Well, there were ample opportunities of communications between the rioters and the uh, police uh, leading to a more peaceful and orderly outcome because, as you can see, the police in Hong Kong are very well equipped and very well trained. It should not feel threatened by the protesters who are relatively young people and they are totally unarmed. Although there were conspiracy theories that blacks were dug up from the row and they might throw blacks at the uh, police force and so on, but the police should be well prepared for that kind of scenario. Many protesters, we understand, are apparently using the messaging app Telegram to coordinate their movements. The app was hit by a cyber attack yesterday during the demonstration, and its founder has suggested that China was behind it. Is conspiracy theory, or is there something to it, do you think? There is no solid evidence against this kind of conspiracy theory, but the Chinese authorities are well prepared for that kind of scenario. One remembers that in 2009, when riots emerged in Urumqi, the capital city of Xinjiang, the Chinese authorities did stop all internet communications for, for several days. And this practice was copied by uh, authoritarian regimes in many uh, uh, third world countries subsequently. So it, it is possible. Uh, and it is significant that the protesters were totally unorganized. They came spontaneously and they relied on internet mechanisms like telegrams and, and, and so on to communicate among themselves. Joseph, Carrie Lam has said that she is not going to shelf debating this controversial extradition bill. You know, back then in 2014, the Occupy movement as well, they had demonstrations, nothing came out of it. Seems like it's a hangover from that. So the People are protesting again this time. Do you think these demonstrations will actually make a difference? I think that most of the people marching last Sunday did not expect Beijing nor the Carrie Lam administration 
to change the positions. But nonetheless, they believed that it was important for them to take a stand, to demonstrate the opposition to the uh, controversial bill, and to indicate their willingness to fight for their basic human rights and political rights. So despite the fact that we expect the bill to be uh, passed without too much difficulty, more or less on schedule with a bit of delays, uh, the government probably has to pay a severe price for this because it loses much of its legitimacy and support and trust of the people and it will be much less effective uh, from now on and much more dependent on Beijing's support. This is not good for the administration, definitely not good for Hong Kong as well. Well, could you sort of elaborate on that point then about you know, what this is going to be doing to Hong Kong's reputation? We know it already took a hit with the umbrella movement. Well, the economy is going to be adversely affected. Uh, this controversy demonstrates that uh, Beijing and the Hong Kong government are, are more concerned with the, uh, what they perceive to be political challenges rather than trying hard to preserve or to maintain uh, a good international environment in the, ter in the territory. And this is disturbing because up till now, uh, the Chinese authorities and the Hong Kong government are quite eager, have been quite eager to protect investors' interests. And they also understand that the rule of law as well as the free flow of information are essential to Hong Kong's functioning as an international financial center. All right, many thanks, many thanks for your thoughts this evening, Joseph Cheng, political analyst speaking to us from Hong Kong.